Hello everyone, Ashley Connell here, CEO and founder of Prowess. I'm pumped for you all to be here today in the first of our uh, Women's Worth series. So Lee and I were talking pre-Women's um, History Month and we're like, what is it that typically all of the women in our community want and can't get enough of? And what we decided and what we came to over and over and over again was how do we get experts in the field to teach them real life stuff that they can use with clients literally tomorrow. And so that's what we want to bring you in this Women's Worth series. I'm again, very, very pumped to have my mother, Tracy Connell from Tracy Connell Interiors. So let me share my screen. Um, so can y'all see this? There she is, in all of her <laughs> glory. It's funny. Um, so with Prowess, as many of you know, we've been alive and well and kicking for the past two years. And recently from a podcast that we did, we have gotten a ton of interior designers coming to Prowess and being like, oh my God, this is the best thing since sliced bread. I desperately need operations help or project management help. And I don't know where to go. And oftentimes they say to us, like, yes, we would love someone who has experience in interior design, but sometimes they don't even need it. They just need to be aware of the interior design. I keep calling it lingo. My mom said there's not really lingo, but um, just the very basics. So that's what we wanted to bring you today is to really just show, hey, real life interior designer, how she works with a project manager and how we would expect you to work with a project manager in um, a project manager client should you be matched with one or should you be interested. So that being said, I am going to kick this off over to my mom. But first I want to do a bit of introduction. Um, <laughs> so this is just a mini, mini montage uh -huh. of me and my mom um, building prowess. One of the reasons why I did it is because I watched my mom work her ass off for what, 25 years now that you've been doing interior design. Almost. And, and I, I, I watched her go from having some samples in the back of her trunk to now having this multi-million dollar company. And so for me, it was such a great example of what you can see you can be. And um, so that's why I I really wasn't scared about being prowess or, or starting prowess. I knew that something would come of it that would be amazing. And I really just wanted to help women like her who were starting businesses and may have needed help, but also women like many of you who were returning to the workforce or need flexible work. And so um, again, big, big round of applause to my mom, um, truly an inspiration for this. So Madre, if you want to share your screen or, or actually, how about you tell a little bit about yourself and how you I got will. started and where you are today? I will, this is so sweet. So, um, one second, let me get that out of the, my picture here. All right, I'm going to put you guys on, I think I got, just went out to gallery, which is kind of weird, but I think something is sinking that shouldn't be. So, um, I'm so happy to see all of you and I'm super proud of Ashley for creating this business for all of you women and, um, an inspiration for me as well. So. It's, it's interesting because out of my three kids, Ashley is very different than me. However, we're the most alike in our entrepreneurial spirit um, in creative aspect while the other two are math and science. So um, yeah, it was interesting. So I, um, I am a former teacher. So my um, degree is in teaching and education, which I did that for six years. And then, um, I stayed home with the kids and then I decided I wanted to get into something that was truly my passion. And I really never knew that I could make money doing something that I loved. So I really just started this business just kind of on a whim. And um, it's, re it's really grown into something, you know, as a passion. And I've also struggled along the way getting to where, because your know, life happens. Um, 
but I'm super grateful for going through everything that I've gone through in my personal life and my resilient kiddos, um, you know, and just where we are today. So thank you, Ashley. And I'm here to talk to you guys. So yeah, I've had this firm for about 20 years, really, really kicked it off about 11 years ago um, and streamlined it to where we can do, you know, multi-million dollar revenue um, with a team. There's five of us, wait, one, two, three, four of us full-time and three um, part-time. So it's so interesting because as one of my passions is teaching, I decided I needed to give back to women as well who've gone through something similar to me or choose to stay home with kiddos or want to change their careers. And so I got into teaching um, other interior designers how to elevate their business, how to get unstuck, how to grow and scale, because I had to do this to make money and I wanted them to do it too. What I have found in all of this, and even myself, designers will pay to outsource or to have someone to just tell them what to do. It is, I'm telling you, like, it is the biggest need. Just tell me what to do. I'm going to do it and I'll pay for it. Because what happens and what I'm going to do is kind of take you through um, sort of the series of the timeline of a, um, a project. Let me get back there. Um, and then that way you can see everything that goes into a full interior design process. So you'll learn some of this lingo as she was talking about, but how I work with my project manager. And the thing is, you know, as, as any entrepreneur, you're wearing tons of hats. And if you're juggling 25 different projects at a time, like we are, and I'm the lead on all of them, you know, Ashley told me, she's probably told you guys the story. Um, we were in the airport at Heathrow. We were on, oh God, it was probably what, 11, 10, year, 10 or 11 years ago. Anyway. I, seven, but okay. Oh, <laughs> seven, that's it, really? Not that uh, old yet. Oh I'm my God, there. yeah. Yeah, maybe, okay, maybe seven. But I was like, oh my God, I'm exhausted. And she's like, well, why don't you just outsource some of the stuff you don't like to do? And I'm like, oh no, no, no. Like I take control over this. And she's like, you just need to outsource. And I was like, oh my God. So I started doing it. And so um, now I'm at a point where, you know, you can outsource social media and some of these other things, but to have somebody in your firm, distance, virtual, whatever, that's boots on the ground and helping you keep everything afloat and moving forward is priceless. So if you guys read, I know, I don't think Ashley likes this book, but Rocket Fuel, it's just an easy way to describe, like, I'm a visionary. Most designers are visionaries. They are not integrators. They're not even executors. So we need to be told what to do. So I'm going to go ahead and show you. It's a presentation that I show to every single potential client when they meet with me. And I'll kind of break it down and tell you guys some of the things that the project manager does to help me keep the um, keep the business afloat. Keep so what I, well, I'm gonna jump in here real quick. What I love about this is that is exactly what we have seen from um, interior designers who are coming to us for help. They don't know what they don't know. And so they're coming to us and saying, hey, I want experts. I want experts in operations and to make my company run smoothly. So they're really truly looking for these partners. So I'm really glad you can um, share your screen, mom, um, to go through this step-by-step -step of, hey, what does a project manager look like and do through each of the steps? And then also feel free to say, hey, look, we had trouble in this one spot, watch out for this. Or, hey, we did something really well in, in this section, remember to do that. So again, um, ladies on the phone, feel free to take notes. I think just so we can get through everything, let's hold questions to the end. Um, but with that, I'll hand it over. Okay, I'll do a speed version of this because I might want to show you also Asana. I know you, you ladies know Asana. That's our lifeline here at, um, at our firm. So we use Asana, we use, I mean, we're simple. Asana, Dropbox. Um, and then we do have a project management accounting system. Okay, 
And I talked to Ashley a little bit about this. We'll get to that. Let me just start up here. So this piece, so when I go through and I'm talking to a client about why to work with our firm, um, there are a lot of different elements that go into it. And this one here is one of our strengths. And this is where we're going to concentrate on today. But there's a lot of things that have to do with budget as well. And so those are the key support roles that I think someone like you guys would be helpful with. I'll skip over this because this is just like us tooting our horn and telling them how easy we're going to make their life. Um, but it does have to do with the team. And Courtney, I'll refer to her several times because she is our project manager. She's everything. She's our social media girl. She's our project manager. You know, now I've just hired her to do some other kind of analytical things, which I really want to talk to you guys about kind of as we get a little further in this presentation. So every Monday morning, we're on a call together. And um, that is when we set up our whole week. Let me get through this. This is just about our niche. So lingo wise, most residential interior designers, which are the ones I'm hoping are calling you, um, we really break it down into really two services. So it's new construction, building houses, which also includes like renovation. I'm going to redo my powder bath or I'm going to remodel the kitchen. Okay. So build services, that's one. And then furnishing. Somebody may say, we just moved into a new house and we need all new furniture. Two areas of service. I like to chunk this down as far as the build, this is where a project manager can really come into play and be a huge support. Because when you think about project management on a new construction, there's a lot of moving parts from dealing with contractors and dealing with subs and ordering plumbing and making sure the tiles where it needs to be and all those moving parts. But as long as there are checkpoints and deadlines and I'll kind of show you that in Asana, the project manager is the one keeping everybody accountable and then going back to them and saying, hey, you know, I know your deadline and this was Friday. Can I help you, you know, maybe meet that goal next week or what's the holdup? To me, the project manager steps in as kind of the bad guy in a way. <laughs> So I don't have to say, well, you know, why isn't that tile drawing done? You know, we said, da, 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 you know, so that's a huge part, keeping everything in line and deadline driven, because I tell my clients when I get to here, our job is not to hold up a project. Our job is to be a step ahead of the builder. So the front part of my presentation is all about construction. This is a lot what you guys would do. Scheduling coordination, that goes down to, again, getting a quote for wall covering and just really setting up all these subs that need to go into these homes. Um, if, if a designer's handling, you know, putting in new countertops, you, you know, you need to call the fabricator and make sure they're on board and the templating is the certain date and why did they show up to measure and it's having all the ducks in a row. You can also be a liaison um, between, you know, if they want to put you a liaison between the client and the builder, that's cool too. Um, the most of this is just design related and then organization and tracking all the pieces and parts that go into res uh, renovation. I'll show you a little bit about what I mean by that. This is also a support that you guys can do. So we keep checklists, and this is just a simple checklist of all the items that would typically go into a new construction home. I show this to our clients that say, hey, we know what comes next, and we're checking this stuff off because the worst thing that could happen is that if you miss something and you know, you're picking something and all of a sudden they're ready to install and oh my God, you don't have the tile picked for the shower pan or something like that. Checks and balances. But that's why we keep all these checklists. With that, these are all the main things that we do include in our, our management. The principal designer does not need to be doing procurement and documentation. It's a great job for a resource like you guys. Um, Quick, what is procurement? 
so procurement is actually well the designer really does the procurement like finding the plumbing finding the tiles but what happens is i'll show you what it, well let me go to the next slide hold on because i think it should be in the next slide okay well hold on no here we go documentation so late let's say that we went and found um you know all the countertops for all the entire house a lot of times the project manager or the designer will go put this into a finished schedule so we're procuring we're finding it but and then it's got to be communicated to the build team and so they would be making these charts these templates in in our world it's called a finished schedule so that's a good lingo that you need to know um tile counter paint plumbing lighting so basically they just want it in a chart because like a builder's different than a designer you know they don't care about the pretty pictures they just want to know crap what room is that chandelier going in and what one is that going in so as long as it's documented the same time every time dimensions where it came from what is the edge of the countertop is it a square eased edge is it a rounded edge this documentation designer should not be doing okay it just you know it just takes too much time this type of stuff the designer does need to do the, this is really what's called a drawing set if for example and this is another thing that a project manager could do if the designer goes into cad this is from autocad and does say the tile drawing then there might be a template like in powerpoint that that the project manager can go and insert the drawings so and that saves time too. So kind of like creating like a some sort of a, a deck, right? Of sorts. Um, this too. So I'm working with um, a design client right now, um, business consulting. And she was like, I just, you know, I need everything in one place. I just feel like everything's scattered. So she is actually working with a prowess. And I gave her this template because I'm like, this is so great for the client to see, to the builder to see, to the designer to see, for the team to see, because everything's in the right place, the same place. So you do feel like you're organized. And if you use this template every single time, so you take out the pictures, you're like, oh, well, we picked everything, but whatever, the, the wallpaper, you know what you've missed. And so you just plug and play plug and play the whole time. But yes, this can be done from your point of view. Um, this type of thing is what designers do. And I'll just kind of tell you, it's called millwork drawings elevation. So that is, that's a, I guess a lingo. Yeah. A, a term of the, of the trade. Yeah, my, I know. My I said, I said there were none. So um, cabinet millwork. millwork. Yeah, millwork. That's like crown molding and stuff. Oh, um, mm -hmm. that's and like cabinet, anything that like to do with wood is millwork. And so these are elevations. You guys would not need to create these. Now, if you love spatial design and new like AutoCAD, that's a whole different story. <laughs> if you know Photoshop and stuff, another story. But honestly, you keeping things afloat is key. Um, none of this we need to know. So that's a lot of it on the build side. It's basically knowing what comes next and holding everybody accountable and really, really kind of defining who does what, like, you know, are, so you don't have overlap. What is everybody responsible for? But that is the support kind of on the build side. Then there's furnishings and equally as that has a million different moving parts, so does this. So I want you to see this. These are the five parts of, I would say the design process. If somebody says, oh my gosh, I need 16 rooms of furniture. And you're like, oh, that's fine. Okay. We're just going to go to one store. Well, that's not how the interior design industry works. Okay. Um, there could be 30 different vendors or manufacturers in one room. So it's a lot to keep up with, a lot to order. So we always start with an agreement. So like what Courtney does for me in this stage, stage of the game is, or one of my designers, like if we come up with a budget, 
they can go and just put it in the contract form. So I don't have to deal with a contract. It's already, the contract's already ready to go. They can take what we decided on our, typically there's a design fee and a product fee. So they can go and complete the agreement. Um, and then now we're like doing the, we're doing a lot of these over Zoom. They can, they, they can um, schedule the Zoom call and send it out to all parties. And then um, schematic design, I'll tell you what that is a little bit. Um, this right, your order and expediting is a huge need as a project manager. So let me just go into the picture part and I'll show you what that means. Um, this is sort of a kind of a repeat of the of that other page. It just really like this is more designer. This right here, and what this means is once you show them what their rooms are going to look like, they're like, oh my God, this is so fantastic. So the designer typically will write down all the specs or put it into a project management software or an accounting software so it can be priced. Some design firms will have the PM order all the things. So that's a little bit more of a learning curve. Um, what happens after they order, and if you guys were ever in a, something with a purchasing um, capability, what happens is you send your POs, then you get your acknowledgements back. And then the PM checks the acknowledgements against the orders to be sure that everything's jiving. Oh, well, I ordered two chairs, swivel chairs, and there's only one on this. And oh, the ship, you know, the ship location, oh my God, it's going to my house. Why had my, my home address get in there instead of the receiving warehouse? Um, those are the checks and balances. And then I'm gonna show you this expedite. This is huge in our industry. When we are, actually I'm gonna show you in pictures so it's gonna help a little bit better. Expediting means that you're tracking where all this stuff is. And right now it's, it's, a, it's a nightmare, it's a pain point, but it's something, if you like to bug people, <laughs> it's a good one, designers need it. Um, so let me tell you about this space. So this is a space we did new construction. And then and that, what that means is we designed the fireplace and the wood surround here. Um, the wall covering, this niche back here, we designed this bar. Um, and then we filled it with furniture. Each thing, piece by piece by piece. This has a different order number than this. This is different than this. That pillow is different. It's just there's a lot of moving parts. So what we do is, and if you were to work with a team for a while, you would understand how they do their budgeting. We always start with a budget. This is something I think a PM could help with because for example, I do this every day and they, I'm on a discovery call with them and you're not supposed to say budget in my world, but you're supposed to say, how much would you um, like to invest in your project? And they're like, I have no idea. And you're like, no. So I was with, I, I think I might've told this to Ashley yesterday. So I was at a potential client's house yesterday and I think it, the house was like a $1.7 million house. Huge, like 7,000 square feet. And as we're walking here, they're showing me pictures on our phone from furniture from Wayfair. As a designer, we don't order off of Wayfair because our job is to give them higher quality, not crazy quality, but higher quality and something they can't ordinarily find. But I said to them, what is your budget? And he said, I was hoping to get this done for $100,000. I know that sounds like a lot of money. Because like, I've always joked, I can't even afford myself. Like, honestly, like, I can't even afford myself to buy furniture, you know. Um, but we like to throw out like a typical family room, soup to nuts, all this stuff. And there's usually more. There's, I don't even think it has everything in here. Accessories, like everything, top to bottom, usually ranges. Like, it'll start at our firm at about $25,000 for the furnishings and go up from there. They wanna see this in a budget. So this is something that the PM, cause if you, you know, if the firm just says, okay, well, we are gonna build a budget and we're gonna say, typically this room will cost 30, this room will cost 35, this room will cost 15. 
and they could plug and play into the numbers presented in a scope of work. Um, so then the designer's ready to present to the client. So this is sort of a numbers thing. This also um, kind of verbiage, this is typically how a budget works where basically most of it's the product fee. So out of that $100,000 he had, I was supposed to get like 12 rooms of furniture you know, out of this number. And then our, our design fee, which is a lot, of, a lot of designers charge hourly and how long it's gonna take us to do the job and our value. And then this is sales tax, shipping, everything goes to receiving warehouse, et cetera. And um, again, you don't need to know this. This is typically what we present. And like I said, when we show them this picture, this is sort of what their room's gonna look like um, because they can't go sit in all the pieces because we order all this separate. But in here, you could have 30, 35 different vendors. So they see this and then we are pricing every single thing in here. You could also help with pricing if the designer says, okay, I want this sofa in this fabric, you have access to all the price lists, you can price it all. You have to be extremely thorough if a designer wants to do this for you or they want you to do this for them. Don't need this. Okay, this is helpful. Um, on, on the, I guess you would call it like the money side, everything goes into proposals. So it's almost like in our business, it's like kind of like our QuickBooks. Some designers use QuickBooks. So if they say, oh, I love the room. I want to order all of it, whatever. We've already established a budget. So they get something that looks like this. They get the picture. This is something that can be input from the PM. It has a pricing, it has dimensions. And then once they're like, okay, it's all signed. It goes on to ordering placing the purchase orders. So this again is something that a project manager could do, but this is where the hiccups come in. And this is where I feel like in our industry, if they're ordering directly from the manufacturers and they're not ordering from Crate and Barrel and they're not ordering from Pottery Barn, then I'm ordering direct from the manu manufacturer. The designer has to keep up with all the moving parts of everything ordered. So what happens is we, you'll send the PO and then you're like, where's the acknowledgement? Like, where is that acknowledgement? You'll have to follow up with the vendor or you'll get something. So everything goes to one location, a receiving warehouse, and they're going to send pictures and they're going to say, okay, well that table, it has a cracked leg. Great. So instead of the designer dealing with the manufacturer, the PM steps in and has a list of repair people. You have to go back to the vendor and say, do you want to send this back? Or do you want me to you know, get some bids on getting repair? Talk about a pain point. This is it. You know, and when you say to a client, we want to install your, um, so installation is not a buzz term. We want to install your entire project on April 25th and then stuff starts getting delayed or things are back ordered. You are the one keeping track of every single thing that came in. And then you can gauge, okay, I think the last piece is gonna get here, you know, April 12th. So I feel comfortable that it gets checked in, any damages, we can schedule your installation on the 25th. So kind of a biggie. Um, also keeping a budget workshop, or I'm sorry, worksheet. This sometimes it goes, falls in line with the, um, with the designer, the designer who's, who's really managing the budget and ordering. But I have to say that um, on, on designers who don't have their act together, like we do, they're going over budget. They're not managing the numbers well. And so for you guys to keep something like this saying, all right, you allocated $25,000 in this project. We need to be sure that you're hitting it. Or if there's three rooms and it's $75,000, I don't care if you spend $30,000 over here and 15, 
just make sure you're within those numbers. This is also something a project manager can do. We send um, status reports every Monday. And again, you might, you know, that, that would be something like if you're pitching to a design, like a design firm, you could say, um, we take care of your customer service. Huge. Because when they're going and they're going to hire a firm like ours or, or any design firm, it's a luxury choice. I mean, come on, not everybody needs an inter design form, you know, firm. So they want to be treated like royalty. It's just kind of crazy and dumb. But anyway, it's just part, it's just part of it. Um, so the status reports, like on the team meeting, if you could, you know, do a virtual team meeting and then they would say to you, okay, Ashley, you know, this is what we did last year, last week. You're going to already know that. This is what we're planning to do this week. You know, you need to put it on the status report. These are the action items. They're going to hold up the decision if they don't pick the wallpaper, you know, by Tuesday. Their action items in any important days. This is where I think um, the PM really needs to, to talk about deadlines and hold the designer accountable. Because in most cases, you are the one babysitting the lead principal designer and making them go do all this. Okay, you're sort of behind the scenes in most cases. But there's a lot, actually, it just depends on the designer. Um, this is just, this is the end of this part, but this is a before and after. So it's always great to show what things look like before and then when we're done with them after. Um, so those are some of the things that we do for the entire process. We're good on time. I'm going to pop on Asana. Is that okay, Ashley? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, because this is sort of our, hold on a second. Let me get out of this. And then let me get into that. Okay. Here we go. Let me get into like, yeah. Let's see if it'll share my screen nicely. Hold on a second. All right, I'm gonna stop the share. Did that stop the share yet or no? Yeah, we can't see your screen. Okay, good. All right, let me see. Hold on, I gotta put my glasses on for five minutes and find out where I am. Okay, um, here we go. Let me move you guys and then I'll share. So our Asana is intense. This is something that um, my design students, my designers have hired Prowess to do as well. And I'm teaching my designers how to set this up because they've never had anywhere to like have the hub of what's going on. So what this looks like is, for example, we have one column of design and this is where, let me see if I can find a good one kind of in. Um, so each client has a page. So each one has their own little project. So the project manager has gone in and copied each one of these templates inside of each project. It's the same thing every time. So the project manager can go in and say, okay, the kickoff meeting, we decide as a team, it's gonna be next Friday, she's assigning. Um, another, I'm gonna kinda, I, let me stop there because this is really important. The timeline of a project, some client, some designers will let it just get 100% out of hand. Out of hand. You have to deliver what you promise. And this is hard for designers. They're so creative. They're all over the place. They don't know what end is up because there's a lot of like moving parts. But if the PM can say, you know what? We agreed that the design development prep should be done within two weeks of project start, it needs to be done. So you're going through this. Pricing needs to be done right before you present a project. Um, 
and it's got all the miss, you know. So here's another thing too. It it holds everybody accountable. So setting up a sauna, and I'm not going to go into all the details right now, but it's really, really something that um, it takes, you know, and this is a good thing to tell the designers. It takes all the like the pressure off the designer because, you know, they're going to come to me and they're going to sign stuff to me without having to be Tracy. You know, I really need you to look at this these three layups before Tuesday, because I need to put them in the presentation. Well, they just assigned it to me. They put a deadline. I know to do it. So all this is set up in Asana, every single project. And again, kind of when you get down to like ordering all the steps, accessory, like expediting, it's all there. So this is sort of the hub. So, you know, if you guys are putting together a package or something, I think this would be a really great addition. Um, you can also, you know, have marketing money, anything you need here. Um, here's that build checklist template that I was telling you about. It's got all the steps. It's got everything. So when somebody misses it, you're like, why'd you miss it? It's all right here, right? It's good for the, because a lot of times, like I have a, a design student right now, a, a coaching student, and she's like, you know, I am like, I'm friends with my design team and that I don't think that they respect me as much as, um, so when they make a mistake, they just don't really even think about it because I know I can't come down on them. If you want to make money and you want to, you know, really do this right, you've got to have people accountable. Um Let's see, and then we have this whole thing here about new prospects. So again, I think this is probably the meat of how to keep things afloat. Like for example, then Courtney, my PM, like on some of them, like back in the day, let's see if she did, she's done it lately. I don't know if she has, um, but we used to do, you can go up here and do like a timeline yeah, we didn't do it. I think we did it or a calendar. And it has where all the things like you need to on, you know, have your design presentation together or send your fees, et cetera. I don't think we use this much anymore, but it's a great tool, you know, if, if people wanted to do that. So I wonder if it's on this guy. No, yeah, we're not using it anymore. So does that, does that help? It, it, yeah, it definitely does it's for me. Um, I have a million questions, um, but I wanted to open it up to yeah. anyone else if they want to kick off, if anyone has any specifics, um, because I've been talking to so many interior designers who are coming to us for help, I obviously know kind of what they're asking for. Can I share one more thing? I don't oh, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the forecasting thing, Ashley, would that be something? Yeah that might be helpful yeah, for sure. um, as another, I mean, because really what you're forming now is like your value letter, right? Like what are the things you can offer to designers or what do they need to know? You don't have to know all of this, but one thing that they are asking me for, and I'm gonna find it and just pull it up because here's the other thing too, y'all, like designers, they don't really know math. I mean, they just don't, you know? And so I fortunately have spent a lot of time on the math part. Um, but I just had Courtney um, put this together for me. So let me find, hold on, I'm gonna move you guys again so I can find this. Um, here we go. And I did sort of take this from um, another designer, but I'm going to show you guys. Okay, let me get to it. Here we go. If a designer says, how am I going to pay my bills, right? Um, and again, that's really not like a project management thing, but it is something that if you are more inclined to the number part, that it's easy 
to sort of take these simple things. So like their overhead expenses, the salaries, your salary, whatever that may be, and know your overhead and then, you know, go in and put, this is how like a simple pipeline would work and manage this for a designer. Because I know like for me, if I'm trying to reach a revenue number, I need to know how many Jones jobs I got to go get to make sure that I'm paying the bills or it's profit and I get to the revenue number that I want. So something like this would be great for a project manager to analyze, hey, where are we with our numbers? To analyze also, like the designers are inputting their hours. Mm -hmm. And you may say, okay, I think it's gonna take 30 hours to get this kitchen remodel done. The PM can kind of track that because all designers should be inputting their hours because you know, data drives decisions. If we know that it took 45 hours on this and we're only bidding out 30, then we need to really look at how we're bidding our jobs. But a project manager can look at that and kind of analyze, oh, well, we bid, you know, a flat fee of $25,000 on this project, which would, you know, equate to however many hours and we work double the time. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to be checking that stuff. And it's, it's all about analyzation. And it's funny because Courtney, like, and I was talking to her about, hey, I want you to analyze this stuff for me. She's like, and she's my guess. I'll do whatever you want me to do. But finally she was like, um, I don't think like, I'm not an accountant. You know, I don't think I can go into margins. I'm like, no, 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 no. I just need you to take it. And it's kind of averaging thing and just look at it and just kind of put it into a table, you know, that says, oh shoot, we're underbidding these jobs. Or if a designer is taking six hours to find a lamp, that is an issue. So I'm going to stop there and I'll let you guys ask questions because I could probably spend another two hours on this. And so I won't. Well, this was awesome. Like I said, I have a ton of questions. Any questions coming in from the chat? For people without a design background, but project management experience, can you suggest how to get started or courses to take that would help us getting our foot in the door? Um, courses to take. Um, it depends if you want to specialize in a part of this. Um, so I kind of put it, I, I kind of put it into two different buckets. So the, there's project management on the accounting side, the financial side, and there is kind of project management on just getting stuff done, right? There are courses, um, you know, not yet. You know, it might even be something for the construction industry, or um, I know there are probably some for design. I don't. Luann might yeah. be even getting some, but and we can I mean, follow up with exactly what they are too. Yeah, um, I mean, if shoot, we can I find them, teach a course. Yeah, I'll, yeah. <laughs> there's not just one because here's the thing: every designer is going to need something different. Right. So they're coming to you with the pain points. Right. And so I think this may help Amber. Um, so uh, mom, you showed a ton of different templates and checklists and all of that. So many of the interior designers that we've been speaking with, they don't have anything like that yet. Right, they don't. Where, where do we suggest they go? How, how would you... Um, pitch that to a designer as if you are the project manager? Um, why don't you just come with a toolbox of templates? You know what I mean? Like they're the only place you can go. Like if I packaged all this and sold it, right? Right. right. Um, like my friend Sandra does. Right. Right. Um, I feel like if you came equipped with these things and they pick and choose 
you know, I need help with like, for example, like I'm teaching, you know, how to do your pitch deck, you know, through Luann or whatever, because they had no clue. Like they don't, they don't have all of this. I feel like as an offering from you guys, it may be that you have right this toolbox. So yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna say one more thing. I think, I think you're right in the fact they don't know what they don't know. They're so scattered. I mean, I hate to be, you know, they're just like SOS. They don't know. They don't know that they're supposed, they don't know they're supposed to have a pitch deck when you're meeting with a potential client to go over. Why, why do you want to hire me? Right. Let me show you why you want to hire me. Right. So what you're saying is that prowess as the company could help our talent who want to go into project uh, uh, interior design um, project management, it would help if we even created some sort of toolkit for them and said, Hey, designers, I don't know if you have something like this, but prowess has our version. Got it. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think it would be um, really beneficial. And mm -hmm. so um, Leah, if you don't mind keeping track of chat and just um, interrupt me, but another question that I had, uh, when we're talking to interior designers, what they're talking about a lot is I need someone who is proactive. I need someone who's not gonna ask a million questions. Can you speak to that and what that looks like either as an example of, of a time where Courtney did this really, really well, like almost like read your mind. And what does that look like so that our talent can know what they mean by proactive? Okay. Um, yeah. So, and, and again, there were so many segments of the design process, but the client, let's say the client satisfaction portion of it. So when I, um, I mean, this, this is what happens. Like somebody will call, our team has a script of what, how to answer the phone, what to say, what questions to ask. The proactive part is what happens next. Tracy, what do you wanna do with this? It doesn't happen like that. They put it into our system that mm -hmm. goes to our CRM. So when we send a newsletter, it's mm -hmm. in there. Um, and then what happens is if I talk, I call the person back, if it's, if they've already vetted them, this is a good, that's another thing a PM can do is vet the calls. Um, and so I say, okay, well, yeah, this sounds great. Why don't we dig a little deeper um, and come into the office or have a Zoom call? Right. Let's do it, whatever, let's plan, you know, Wednesday at noon. So I will go into Asana next to their name because they're under there as a prospect and I'll put meeting Wednesday at noon. That kicks Courtney into gear on the client mm. satisfaction. She has a template. It's an email that goes out. We're looking forward to your meeting, da, 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 whatever, at your house at noon. Here's the link for payment. It's mm -hmm. just done. And every time, like, and then after what, it, it's just a sequence. So when we finish the house, thank you for coming out. Another newsletter goes out. Right. Or a thank you card. Or right. after presentation, we're so glad we enjoyed the presentation. Boom, bitty, boom, bitty, boom. I always are like, did you send that reminder? And then a reminder. And she's like, Tracy, I sent it. Like. If, if it's, if it's not on a sign and then I send it, but I'm like, okay, so she's a step ahead of me. Yeah. The, the, you can't be proactive without creating a process. So that designer has to be, you are not a mind reader. Courtney can read my mind now. You guys are not mind readers, but by creating a process around that certain segment will set mm -hmm. everybody up for success. Mm -hmm. But all they have so, to do is say, what's the pain point, right? Right. So what I'm hearing you say is if our talent goes in and starts talking to interior designers, one of the first questions needs to be, or maybe the first one of the first exercises is, hey, let's go through your entire process, soup to nuts. And they lay out, okay, where is the pain point in each one of these steps? And the designer says it's here. And then in theory, the, the talent could then go and say, okay, and create a system for that and create a process for that and create a template and then move to the next one and move to the next one, move to the next one. It could be from start to finish or could be as far as um, how 
how immediate that need is or how important or priority that is. Yeah, because I was going to say, yeah, that would be on the discovery call, right? I mean, I wouldn't go through each process on the discovery call. No, I'm after saying- After they're hired? After yeah, they're, after they're okay. hired. So when they're starting with someone. Mm -hmm. I think like however you guys do your questionnaire or your discovery call, mm -hmm. um, you're finding out what is the deal because they will most likely not need everything. Right. And then you can plan it. Okay. We'll concentrate on this, this, and this. I have a solution for that. And that's, that's the, that's the sales thing, right? That's a, sorry, well, and thing. oftentimes, I mean, the way that it works with prowess is we'll have multiple project managers who are interviewing for this spot. So it's really key mm -hmm. that all of the women are able to sell themselves. Right. Right. And so, so what, again, I'm hearing you saying is even having some sort of, hey, designer, this is how I would go about the process to getting started with you. This is how I would take your pain point and break it up into chunks and systematize it. Right. This is an example of some time that I have done it before. Maybe it wasn't in interior design, but I've done it before and this is how it worked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously, because you're right, you're selling yourself, but if you can use some of this lingo, or I mean, I can talk to you later about knowing how to take, because everything I talk about today, that's the main thing, unless they talk about like marketing or something, but yes, how to take it and say, I want to take that off your plate because I can be doing that while you're selling business or meeting with clients. Because if you so think, you yeah. Go ahead. Would you say that's like the golden ticket saying something like that? Like you continue to go sell, you continue to go do what you love. I'll be there to be doing the. Holding everybody accountable, keeping right. things on schedule. That's the main thing with our business. Like they freak out. Like, what do you mean? It's going to be nine months until I get my furniture. And then if it ends up being 12 months because you're unorganized, here's what I tell my clients, like my reputation is all I have, you know, it's all I have. I got to go sell myself every single day. And, you know, a lot, our, our business is word of mouth. We're all pretty mm -hmm. much small. Mm -hmm. And so if you can give the very best experience and maybe that's mm -hmm. a big term, best experience. And so much of that has to do like, less with talent, but more about keeping things up like you do not want your client worrying about is that wallpaper guy going to show up tomorrow well and, and something else you said one of your big differentiators was that you really focus on project management so are you saying based on the clients that you've had before that others are just completely all over the place and so by being this project management you could truly be changing the experience for the clients 100% I mean, because again, like why, I mean, why would I have all these templates and all these charts and all this, you know, because we all learn from our mistakes. We all learn about what, what upsets a client and we all have passions, you know, about what we feel strongly about. My passion is not to disappoint a client. And I know that if something shows up damaged and it was an oversight on my part, that I'm going to, it's, I'm going to be upset about it. So all it is, is trying to upload or up level the experience with the clients to take the worry off of them, mm -hmm. the worry off the designer, even though the designer is ultimately responsible, you're holding them accountable. You're yeah. organizing, like you're organizing their business Yeah. by these checks and balances that you're going to implement. Yeah. And, um, a lot of the, the interior designers who come to us, they don't know how many hours they should quote unquote budget for someone to come in and help. What would you say the bare minimum would be? Um, depends how busy the designer is. Um, oh, okay. yeah, it just depends. You know, if they're starting out, you know, you'll probably wouldn't need that much, but, um, I would say it, and it depends on how much they're doing. Like if yeah. they're ordering an expedite, I mean, it just depends. Okay. You know, I wouldn't say any less than like 10 hours, you know, I mean, 
Courtney could be here full time, but she's not because I have, uh, you know, all these other people, but it's, I mean, it could be intense. All right. Well, this is awesome. We only have three minutes left and I know that you have a a client call right after this. Any last questions before we wrap up? Awesome. Well, I feel like I have a lot of action items of creating all these templates (laughs) that you have just assigned for us. Actually, they're for sale. They're for sale. Oh, there we go. (laughs) There we go. I see what this is all about. Maybe I'll just take a commission. No friends and family discount. (laughs) I see. I see. I see. Um, Well, mom, this was amazing. I, I think, I mean, we, I learned so much of this stuff today, I think what would be really helpful is we even break this down into many sections because we're getting so many designers coming to us and because we have so many women who are very, very interested in interior design project management. So uh, I think this was an awesome overview and this is just the very beginning of um, pulling all this together. Yeah, I hope so. And I'd be happy to chat by phone to any of you guys if you are going up for something or have questions or you know I love Voxer as she does the I love Voxer um or you could you could ask me I'd be more than happy to break down anything or answer any questions so well that would be awesome good well thank you so much this yeah, was great nice to my meet mom and I have always guys. talked about having a podcast so this is this is a bit of a pilot of our, our <laughs> Mother daughter duo podcast. It'd probably be a little <laughs> raunchier than this, but <laughs> well, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh God, I love it. All right. Well, thank you so so much. Um, if there's anything else that again, y'all have any questions, feel free to follow yeah, up. It's Tracy Connell at tracyconnellinteriors.com, um, or come to me and I can um, I can. It's, it's y'all. just Tracy at tracyconnellinteriors.com. Oops. Tracy. Feel free. I'd I'd be happy to help. (laughs) Awesome. All right. Well, thank you all. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thanks, Ashley. You're welcome. Thanks. Bye-bye.